Uh, time now for our daily interview series, Money Talks. And today we're joined by Jeff Dewing, CEO of Cloud FM Group, one of Europe's leading facilities management companies. Now, Jeff isn't one of our usual success stories. He was once the owner of a reputable business and football club, but lost it all and was left with £7.60 pence in his bank account, all to feed his family. But instead of being down and out, he just got back up on his feet, setting out to change what Jeff considered a broken facilities management industry. He grew Cloud FM into a whopping £70 million enterprise in just four years, all from his garden shed. Well, he's left the shed to join us here in the studio. Welcome to Jeff Dewing, our latest guest on Money Talks. Jeff, thank you very much for coming in. Great to have you in. I have to ask you, have you still got the shed? I have still got the shed, yes. It's Good a man. part of place, as always, because that's where it began. And, and, and this was literally when you were out on your feet, having had you know, a successful business at one stage. Um, yes, I mean, it, it, the story is that you go to this success, you enjoy it, you enjoy the life, and then things come crashing down, which they did for me. It wasn't a question of they crashed on Monday and I bounced back Tuesday. It took a, so it took a, number, of, yeah, it took a right. number of years to reflect on what had gone wrong, how it had gone wrong, how I'd let my family down. Um, and this included else. a football club as well? Well, this was, yeah, because at the time when I was running the business, which was very successful, I couldn't grow the business beyond a certain level, which was frustrating me. So I, I lost interest and I, I tried to get people into grow the business, but I just couldn't find, I couldn't find the people I needed. Business so, angels, as they call yeah, them. Well, yeah, well, just people that, I believe, devils, were, some yeah, say. <laughs> people that I believe were as good or, or better than me to take the business to a, a new mm. level, and I, I, I just couldn't solve the problem. So I got bored, and, and I had the opportunity to buy a football club, which reignited me in, in, in passion. So that's why I did it, um, and that's where the football club came into play. But down to £7.60 in the bank account. That's, that's pretty serious, isn't it, it? It was serious, and it's one of the things that, you know, from a working-class background, keeps your feet on the ground. And, um, and when it hit rock bottom, yes, my wife said to me, can you go out and get some, uh, a loaf of bread and some baked beans for, for the kids' tea? And I said, yep, no problem, shot out. Went to the ATM, and there was £7.60. Of course, it had only dispensed £10. So I had to go back and say I couldn't even get the bread. Mm, and that was obviously the lowest point of my life, not just because of the £7.60, but because of how it made me feel not being that sport of family. Yeah, yeah. So you're back in the shed... What then happened to turn that into, well, originally, I think you were looking at a turnover uh, within a, a matter of years of some, uh, well, yeah, millions, literally, um, and, and, you're, and you're back on your feet. Well, so what happened was I'd, after going through that, that process and that lesson, um, I then sort of realised I had a lot of lessons to learn. I was far from a typical entrepreneur that thought, thought they understood and knew it. Mm -hmm. So I went back into the world of employment and decided I needed to meet some, some different methodology. I'd love to see businesses. I went through the small owner-managed, large owner-managed, and then went into the corporate world, and I wanted to see how people overcame these challenges. So I had to go on a lesson process. So it took me six years. Oh, right, so it wasn't, over, those yeah. it wasn't yeah. overnight. And yeah. then once I'd learnt those lessons, I then said, right, let's bring that shed alive. OK. And, and Cloud FM, not a radio station, people trying to yeah, find yeah, it on yeah. the radio, facilities management. Correct, yeah. And you saw a, a gap there. Well, I've worked in facilities management all my life. That was where my first business was born okay. and, uh, and where I went into work afterwards. And, and facilities management is a huge industry. One in seven adults work in facilities. Wow. Facilities management. It's a £200 billion industry in the UK. So it's very underestimated. So, but what I found was I found the industry that's, that employs hundreds of thousands of people, um, I found it's an industry full of fantastic people behaving badly. <laughs> and, um, and they was only behaving badly because of the environment they're in. So I, I decided that I needed to fix that environment. And then you got walloped a second time, pandemic comes along, yep. you lose 95% of your operating profits, yep. but you get back on your feet again. And now your, your projected profits are, what, 250 million operating profits yep. Yep. For the next four years. And I think that's because, again, when the pandemic hit, let's be honest, everybody was scared. Yeah, yeah. Um, everybody was frightened. No one knew what, to, what was going to happen. We were all going through you know, trauma and fear and God knows what. Um, some to a greater extent than others. But um, we were looking after the hospitality industry, which closed. So naturally, our revenue just fell off a cliff. Mm. Um, but then it was about we, where the philosophy has said, look, we've all got to hold our breath at the same time for the same amount of time. And we've all got to do one thing that we're all very frightened of doing, and that is looking after each other. If we right. look after each other, 
it will work out fine. But you had to have the courage. Not to looking after number one, but looking after example, number two, three and four. Right. And that includes your supply chain, it includes your clients, it includes okay. your staff. It's about how do we truly put them before ourselves and this will get us through. Now, you've got a book and you've got a podcast as well. And the whole point about this is doing the opposite. Is, yes. that, is that fair enough to say? It is, yes. That's one of the things that I always seem to have done without realising it, and the book brought it to life. When I was asked to write the book, um, I realised that all I've ever done is the opposite um, and just not followed the herd, done something completely different. It's like the government today that are twiddling knobs. Well, I was just about to ask you that. Um, I mean, Boris Johnson, that quote, when the herd moves, it moves. Um, I think a lot of people would be hoping the government moves on this energy crisis at the moment. Mm. Let's, Let's make you in charge of UK PLC in terms of being the Chancellor or the Prime Minister, how would you address what's going on at the moment? Because obviously a lot of things are outside the government's control in, in terms of the international gas price. Is it? I mean, Ooh, right, OK. <laughs> um, I mean, the first thing I'd do is buy a new pair of shoes for Rishi. Um, but I think... <laughs> and a suit that fits, some may say. But there we are, right. Uh, no, listen, I'm, I'm not going to pretend to be a politician, but we've all got views. We've all got a view, which is what makes it an incredible subject. But... When I look at people like Germany, the cost of living increase or or crisis at the moment is absolutely affecting everybody. Um, And if you look at something like Germany that says, well, how do we solve this? This isn't about gifting cash that never finds its way to where it's needed. Uh, They've just launched a process where they charge you nine euros to travel anywhere in Germany on any public transport for three months. Now, that has a massive positive impact. Just to get the economy moving and to get growth. People moving and to to protect people that are not having to spend all this money. Right. If you then look at... um, Oh, I was just looking on the train this morning. When you look at the returns that you've got for first, second, third quarters for Shell, BP and all the energy companies... That are, that are Centrica, 1.3 billion operating profits for the first six months of the year. Of course. Well, then you look at Shell, which is 40 billion for the year, yeah. which is just profit. That's not, mm. yeah, that's not revenue, that's profit. So would you, would you think of a windfall tax? Uh, absolutely. Because one of the things I, I read a few articles on uh, um, a few of the CEOs and they said, look... We've forecasted our profits for the next five years. We've forecasted our investment that meets government recommendations and requirements. We've suddenly been hit with this additional profit. We're happy to share that back because it's not going to affect our investment. It's not going to affect yeah. our investment. And, and BP were in a position, they had so much money, they, they had a share buyback, which means they don't know what else to do with it. Well, exactly. That's yeah. the whole point. So why not support, we're back to support each yeah. other, right? And there's an opportunity that you won't fix the problem, but you'll certainly smash a hole in the... the I mean, going from the... Typical energy bill to four thousand two hundred pound. I mean, that's just that's yeah. just out of control. So I, I know you won't agree with Gordon Brown on nationalising the, the the industry, but he did suggest, which has been picked up, was a social tariff to help in terms of maybe you know a two tier uh, energy price, and and those that literally can't afford it have got a subsidised uh, bill coming through. Well, that's that's my working class background. So the, yeah, the yeah. principle is you, we should absolutely do that. Looking after but there them. are ways that you can solve the problem. One is windfall tax. The other is doing something with public transport. Uh, we've got to stop the strikes first, of course, so we've got to make sure we play ball with that. But the reality is how do we do things actually hit people's pockets straight away?